Aloha and welcome to the Human Impact on Ecosystems video. In this video, we will explain how human activities can harm ecosystems. We'll talk a little bit about the greenhouse effect and we'll describe what introduced species are and their effects on the ecosystem. Now, humans are a unique species on the planet. Every species on the planet is kind of limited by the niche that it fills. Humans are able to redefine the niche that they fill by the use of technology. So we've had a negative impact on the planet because we are living where we don't belong and doing things that we shouldn't be able to do, biologically speaking. So when we look at our negative impacts, we have to look at the impact of growth of the human population. And as we get bigger, what do we do? We have to make places for us to live. And in doing so, we're destroying native habitats or natural habitats to put in new cities and towns and houses and things of that nature. Now, because we're such a big population, we have the idea of trash. So we actually don't use things straight from the ecosystem. We manufacture, package, do all that kind of stuff. So we have all this trash to get rid of. So that takes up more space that we have to get rid of, but also we have the potential for pollution coming from that trash. We've already hinted at the impact of land development when we talk about building new cities and things of that nature, putting in new roads. And we do that just for our species and that all has a negative impact on the environment around it. Now, going back to the trash and going to the pollution, we have things like chemical runoff, acid rain. We actually produce more ozone than is necessary and we should talk about ozone real quickly. Ozone forms a layer in our atmosphere and the ozone layer is very important. The reason for that is, is it blocks out this ultraviolet radiation from the sun. It's kind of like the world sunblock. So by having that ozone layer, we're able to have life on the land. If we didn't have that, everything would have to be below the water because it can't, the ultraviolet radiation can't penetrate into the water and cause the same damage. So we'd have a lot of skin cancer without the ozone layer. The bad thing is, is we produce more ozone. It goes up there, it gets a little bit thicker, and ozone is a heavily component of smog. So when you look at the smog in the cities, part of that is the ozone that we're creating. The last thing I want to talk to you about today is going to be this greenhouse effect and what that's all about. And the greenhouse effect is something that's natural. We have it going on on the planet. It's kind of like a blanket for the planet. It traps in a little bit of heat so we don't get too cold. And it kind of makes it a little bit harder for it to warm up. So during the daytimes, it kind of it works as a buffer system, kind of makes it so that the planet's inhabitable temperature-wise. Now, when we talk greenhouse effect, we're going to talk about the gases that do it. The biggest gas that we have out there is water. Water vapor in the atmosphere does most of the greenhouse effect. But there's this other one, carbon dioxide, here. And our problem is, is what we've done since the Industrial Revolution is we put people into cities and now we have to heat the cities, we have to generate electricity, and most of that's done through fossil fuels. And one of the pollutants, one of the things we release is carbon dioxide into the environment. And because we've been removing habitat and getting rid of forests and things like that, there's no longer the plants to deal with the excess CO2. And that's what we're talking about is this rapid climate change and global warming of the past is what's the effect of this carbon dioxide that we're putting out into the atmosphere. Now, part of the things with humans is we have this idea of introduced species. We're bringing species into places where it wasn't naturally found. And when we do so, one of the things we notice is where it's naturally found, there's a predator that keeps that population in check. But when we put it into someplace new without that predator, those populations are able to bloom and they go crazy. So a couple examples are the kudzu vine that we see now in America. We brought that over from a garden. But when it gets out of a garden, what it does is it'll actually take over and cover the plants with this kudzu vine. And then these plants underneath it starve and die out because they're no longer able to do photosynthesis because they're covered by the leaves of the kudzu vine. Some other examples that we might have heard about are the emerald ash borer. And that one came in in wood products. We didn't even know it came. And now it's just going through trees and decimating our forests. And then finally, we have the zebra mussel here that you can see. And the zebra mussel came in inadvertently. It wasn't like somebody said, hey, we should have mussels here. Instead, it came in in the ballast tanks of ships. And when they flushed out the ballast tanks, they flushed out these zebra mussels. And because there's nothing that feeds on them, they were able to explode in populations. So when you introduce a species, you might not think anything of it at the time, but because it's not held in check, that population has the chance to bloom and go crazy like we've seen in some of these species. 
Okay, so that's it for this video. As always, good luck with the lessons, and we'll see you in the next video.